Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, it took all night to debate, but President Joe Biden's COVID relief bill finally passes in the Senate. The path it took to get there and what it means for you. The first vaccine clinic of its kind in the Star City. Why health leaders think it's the boost needed to slow the spread of the virus. The search continues for a missing man from Bedford County. The message from his loved ones working to find him. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Ted News at 6. I'm Jessica Jewell. President Joe Biden's America Rescue Plan clears a hurdle this weekend. The Senate has voted in favor of the $1.9 trillion package by a slim margin. John Lawrence explains why it was tough to get a bipartisan compromise. It took an all-night voterama to get to the finish line, but on Saturday afternoon, the Senate passed the Biden administration's COVID-19 relief bill. The yeas are 50, the days are 49. The bill as amended is passed. The president says help is on the way. This plan puts us on a path to beating the virus. This plan gives those families who are struggling the most the help and the breathing room they need to get through this moment. This plan gives small businesses in this country a fighting chance to survive. Some changes were made to the bill passed by the House, including a narrowing of the eligibility of stimulus payments. A provision to boost the federal minimum wage to $15 got cut, too. The bill still passed along party lines, with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeting that the bill will fund a parade of unrelated policies. Anything less than a Senate where you have a supermajority, over 60 members of one party, it's really tough to get bipartisan compromise on anything that isn't a must-pass piece of funding legislation. The Senate bill provides direct payments up to $1,400 a person for families that earn less than $160,000 per year, while the unemployed will get a $300 increase to their jobless benefits through September 6th. John Lawrence, 10 News, working for you. Thousands more people in the Roanoke Valley are protected against COVID-19 tonight thanks to another large-scale vaccine clinic at the Berglund Center. This time, the patients never even had to leave their cars. 10 News reporter Taj Simmons joins us now live from the drive through clinic. So, Taj, how's it been going? Well, Jessica, even though the army of cones behind me looks like chaos, everything has been pretty efficient. Thousands of cars have come to the Berglund Center today, but during all of that time, traffic has never slowed down to a crawl. Now, Rona, uh, excuse me, Roanoke City and Allegheny Health Director Cynthia Morrow believes that this drive through clinic is exactly the turbo boost they need to get their vaccine numbers where they hope to be. There were 4,000 slots available for today's clinic, but they did not last long at all. Dr. Morrow says they all filled up within five hours of the Virginia Department of Health's notification earlier this week. Everyone here received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which, if you've been following, is a one-dose shot. Dr. Morrow says an event like this shows people are more comfortable than ever with the vaccines. We were all very worried about vaccine hesitancy, and of course we are going to have pockets of vaccine hesitancy. We're really going to need to work on that as we move forward, as vaccine supply increases. But what we do know is that the demand is still there and we're getting more vaccine and so we're really enthusiastic. These cones are not going anywhere. 4,000 more people will get vaccinated here tomorrow. But if you're hoping to get to that, it's already too late. All of those slots also filled up within hours of the VDH's announcement. I'll have more of what I've seen from the clinic coming up later on on 10 News at 11, as well as some more of my conversation with Dr. Morrow, including when she thinks the vaccine supply will finally catch up with demand. For now, reporting live in Roanoke, Tosh Simmons, 10 News, working for you. Former President Donald Trump tells Republican campaign committees to stop using his name. An advisor for Trump says his attorney sent cease and desist letters Friday to three GOP organizations asking them to stop using his name and likeness in fundraising appeals and merchandise. Since Trump left office, those organizations have repeatedly referenced him in emails asking for donations. The search for a missing Bedford County man continued along the Blue Ridge Parkway this afternoon. Brent Gibson was last seen three days ago at the Roanoke River Overlook, which is where his car was found that day. A group of 75 volunteers and park rangers searched in and around the Overlook. They didn't find any clues today, but Gibson's loved ones say they won't stop until they find him. A lot of people have lost faith in humanity and this 
actually helps us so much to know that people really are very kind and they care. Just, yeah, people care. The volunteers will return to search tomorrow. If you have any information about Gibson, contact Blue Ridge Parkway Dispatch. Everyone is okay after a small plane crash at Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport this morning. Airport crews say they had to clear the runway to respond to the crash. Two people were on board the small plane. Authorities say cleanup on the runway was minimal. A familiar face joins the competition for Virginia's Republican nomination for governor. Former Roanoke City Sheriff Octavia Johnson formally announced her run this week. She served as Roanoke Sheriff from 2006 to 2013. She says her main priorities are funding rural school districts, expanding school choice programs, and protecting gun laws. Everybody has heard of all the other candidates. They know what their message is. Now they're going to hear Octavia Johnson's message. And that will help them to decide who is stale bread and who is fresh bread. Johnson joins a crowded field of candidates, including Kirk Cox, Amanda Chase, and Pete Snyder. A drive through fundraiser aiming to renovate a local treasure. Why organizers say it's time for this park to be updated. And a place for people to feel comfortable in the community. How a new coffee shop serves as a cafe with a purpose. And temperatures were fairly seasonal today, but those winds caused it to feel so much colder when those winds die down and when we warm up coming up in your full forecast. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. A clothing company with a mission is raising money to renovate a park in northwest Roanoke. Humble Hustle hosted a drive through fundraiser at the Villa Heights Recreation Center this afternoon. The money will be used to repair the playground and basketball court. The organization says Villa Heights is a significant space for northwest Roanoke, and kids in the neighborhood deserve to see it spruced up. This park has been here for over 100 years, so just the deterioration has taken place over time. It's time for it to be updated the same way as we've seen other areas in the community be updated. And it's beautiful in those regions, and we've seen the results that have come from it. We just want the same benefits. The group is still raising money for the project online. With signs of progress in the pandemic, people are worried about leaving their furry friends at home. What a new survey suggests about allowing pets in the office. But first, a live look from our Poor Mountain Sky Cam. A beautiful sunset taking shape there. It's been pretty sunny today, but it's also been very windy. Delaney tells us when we can expect a warm up coming up in just a few minutes. A new coffee shop in the Star City is creating opportunity one cup at a time. Chris's Coffee and Custard held a ribbon cutting ceremony today to celebrate its grand opening. Chris and his mom Beth have worked over the years to turn it into a cafe with a purpose. She created the business to employ and train people with special abilities. Her vision is to have a place where they can feel comfortable and like part of the community. It's a point to me. I want to work with my friends, my family, and my, my soccer team, and my, and everything I want to like. That's my dream job I love. Chris says anyone who wants to start their own business just needs the courage to make it happen. One year later, pandemic travel vouchers are about to expire if they haven't already. According to a study by Bankrate.com, more than half of adults who laid out money for canceled activities have already lost those funds. With expiration dates quickly approaching, it's a good time to check on those vouchers. If you aren't ready to use it, ask for an extension. Many airlines and hotels have relaxed their policies and waived fees. A new survey reveals pet owners are worried about returning to the workplace. The Banfield Pet Hospital finds one in three people got a new pet during the pandemic. It seems employers are taking note. Half of executives surveyed say they're planning to allow pets in the workplace upon return to the office. And 59% say they'll allow more flexibility for workers wanting to stay remote with their pets. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. 
We did bring in a little bit more cloud cover today, but nothing too much. Just those higher cirrus clouds and if anything, just making a beautiful sunset as we look to our sky cam at the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport. Gorgeous colors in the sky. Temperatures are mostly in the 40s at this point, so temperatures were of course cooler like yesterday because of the cold front that moved through 47 now in Roanoke after hitting a high of 52 49 in South Boston. You're still in the low 50s currently in Danville and just above that freezing mark in hot springs over the next few hours with our clear skies overhead. We will see those temperatures dropping very quickly back into the 30s already by nine even into the 20s across the entire area by tomorrow morning. So this is definitely going to be the coldest night that we have over the last few evenings because some of us still held on to those 30s 27 in Roanoke 28 back towards Danville Blacksburg at 24 and 22 in Floyd. So a cold start to your Sunday winds though are going to be calmer as we go past sunset for this evening and they're going to stay calm for several hours for the first half of your day. But as we head into the uh, late afternoon and early evening hours, we're going to see those winds picking up again. Now, luckily it's not going to be lasting as long. Once the sun starts to set, those winds are going to start to calm back down. So you're going to see some relief there for tomorrow. Staying cooler, staying in the 50s for most of the area with weaker winds. That high pressure system is nearby. High means dry. We are going to keep that rain away over the next several days. Calm conditions for Monday. So yes, those winds will be calmer and our temperatures. They are going to be rebounding very nicely. In fact, tomorrow we're just going to be a little bit below average by about five degrees average being 55. But take a look at what happens by Tuesday. We're going to be running more than 10 degrees above average for several days in a row. And yes, that does include some 70s, at least for some of us. Now it has been a while since we've held on to dry conditions for five days straight today. The last time that happened was back in December, so it's been a few months and we've certainly been enjoying it. Not only that, but later this week we are going to have a stretch of 70 degree weather, at least for many of us, looking to be about three days at this point. And the last time that happened was back in November, so we're going to be enjoying that also. Now your dog walking forecast for tomorrow. Jessica, who, who is that? Is that Bentley? <laughs> I put I put her dog in the dog walking forecast. She's so happy. Temperatures will be in the 40s by 10 a.m. For your seven day forecast in the New River Valley, our temperatures will be up to the 50s on Monday, 60s from there. You will be staying out of the 70s. For the Highlands, you'll briefly tap into the 70s on Thursday. Heading towards south side, of course, our warmer area, you'll be in the 70s from Wednesday through Friday. And we head towards the end of the week. Yes, we are tracking the potential for some isolated rain showers, but as of right now, they're not looking to last all day long and they're looking to be very isolated. So some of you may not even see rain. We still hold on to that sunshine, so not looking too bad over the next several days. Temperatures are going to be feeling very nice. Where'd you find that picture? Uh, I took it off of social media. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> she told me the other day, why isn't Bentley on there? Yeah. So now he is. He was feeling left out. He is watching at home right now. Oh, of course. So. So now, he, now he feels like one of us. <laughs> Thank you for including him. He's going to love this weather this week. Yes, it is, is going to be beautiful. It really is. All right. Thanks, Delaney. Tonight on 10 News at 11, it's been a busy week in Southwest Virginia. If you didn't get a chance to catch up on the headlines every night, we're working for you to bring you some of this week's top talkers. And coming up, another historic win for VMI football, a check on ODAC Hoops tournament action while UVA plays for an ACC title, and some high school football from Buena Vista highlights and more next in sports. Ahead for us, the new COVID concerns over packed spring break spots and why some movie classics are getting a second look with a more critical eye. Also, the astonishing gift for kids learning piano on Nightly News. Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10. It's not high school football in 2021 if we don't make it a two-day affair, right? Covington taking their talents on the road today at Perry McClure. A little midday marching band action in Buena Vista this afternoon. Second quarter, Ty Ruley hands off to Nick Reed. Fumble recovered by Chadwick Tacey. Covington going the other way. Ensuing drive, Cougars from just inches away from the goal line. Quarterback Simon Gibson up the middle for the score. The Blues leading 8-6. to six. 
Under 30 to go in the half. Ruley with the pass to J.B. Wade in the end zone. Blues up 16 to 6 in the third quarter. Covington coming right back during the one yard line. Gibson on the QB keeper to score for the Cougars. They would score 35 in the second half to go on to the win this win 41 24. More scores coming at the bottom of your screen. Your news and notes Lee Westwood leading the Arnold Palmer. Palmer Invitational after round three. Daniel Hemrick leading the Xfinity race as we speak. And Kevin Harvick on the pole for tomorrow's Cup Series race in Las Vegas. A lot of racing action ramping up here as that season continues. Yeah, it seems like there's a little bit of everything going on a right now. A little bit of everything yes. right now. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> love to see it. Makes for a busy sports department, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> well, more sports for you here. There are two types of baseball fans. Those who watch the game like Eric and maybe those like me and Delaney who <laughs> do that, no. might rather <laughs> sleep during it. I don't know. Temperatures for this evening dropping quickly already into the 30s by 9 p.m. Winds will be calming here after the sun sets and your seven day forecast keeps our temperatures on this warming trend by the second half of the week. 70s for many of us. Mm, love to see that. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us for 10 News at 6.